If you think of gum trees, well, paintings of gum trees anyway, I'll wager a bet that the images that come to your mind are probably those of Hans Heysen. No one painted gum trees more obsessively than Hans Heysen did. He was born in Germany in 1877, came to Australia, to Adelaide, with his family when he was seven, and lived and worked most of his adult life in Harndorf, the German settler town in the Adelaide Hills, until his death in 1968. And although he was definitely a popular and successful painter in his own lifetime, since then opinions about his art have waxed and waned a bit. An exhibition of his work is on now at the Art Gallery of South Australia. It's the first major exhibition for more than 30 years and the biggest ever. And after Adelaide, it goes on tour around the country for the next two years. Rebecca Andrews is the curator. Rebecca, what's the general current opinion on Hans Heiss and is he in or out of fashion at the moment? Oh, look, there's certainly been a reassessment of Heysen's influence on the, the history of Australian art. And certainly this exhibition is timed to encourage a, a reassessment and uh, introduce him to a new generation of people. I wonder if uh, our interest in him now also is in part at least nostalgia for a, a rural Australia that uh, many of us don't have that much contact with anymore and even where contemporary images that we're confronted with are so often of environmental damage you know like the the dying river red gums of the Murray or the old growth forests being logged so that we have a nostalgia for Heysen's majestic and healthy and living gum trees. Yes I, I think you're probably right there really is a nostalgia for a time when the land was bounteous and prosperous and people were able to work the land because there was plenty of rain around and mm. uh, certainly Heysen's images capture that era that really no longer exists, I, I think we can clearly say. Heysen was painting some of his best gum tree paintings from the period uh, from about 1912 up to the late 1920s and he certainly captured an aspect of, of the Australian landscape that we don't find now. It's so much drier now and, you know, after many years of drought, uh, I, I think people can relate to those paintings and, and look upon them quite favourably. Well, in 1899, as a promising young painter, 22 years old, Heysen was sponsored by a group of Adelaide businessmen to go to Europe to study. He spent four years there painting pictures of well, really things like scenes of the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris and uh, of St Mark's and the, the canals in Venice. Then he comes back to Australia and it strikes me as extraordinary that he comes back to Adelaide and does really pretty well immediately start painting gum trees as opposed to these sort of European images that he's been seeing and painting. What do you reckon these trees meant and symbolised to him? Well, I think people forget that Heysen was a young art student in Adelaide prior to going to Europe. In his late teens, he was actively going out on long walks into the Adelaide foothills and sketching and painting the, the bush and the landscape and the gum trees. And then he goes away to Europe for those four years and has that wonderful opportunity to study at the, then the, the mecca for art studies around Europe in Paris and goes to the major art schools there. And on return to Adelaide in 1903, he still uh, obviously has kept a lot of that experience and used that experience from his European study trip. But I don't think it's that unusual that he immediately immerses himself back into the Australian landscape. He always had had an affinity with the landscape and the Adelaide Hills. And one of the very first paintings he produced on return to Adelaide was Mystic Morn, painted in 1904. The first painting of his that the Art Gallery of South Australia required, is that right? That's right, yes. Uh, the gallery purchased it directly from Heysen in 1904 and he was just 27 years old at that time. And it was also a painting that had recently been awarded the Wynn Prize for Landscape which was then the only high prestige art prize in Australia, something probably uh, um, akin to what the Archibald means today in terms of popularity. So it was a huge achievement for Heysen to be awarded that prize for that painting. <laughs> 
Rebecca, do you think that with all those paintings to follow of the heroic, majestic gum trees that Heysen was deliberately and, and consciously embarking on a kind of nationalistic project? Oh, I think so. Uh, I mean, we have to consider that he was the next generation after those great Australian Impressionist painters like Arthur Street and Frederick McCubbin and Tom Roberts. And he had, as I mentioned before, such an affinity for the landscape. But what sets Heysen aside from those earlier artists of the previous generation is that he Heysen is the first to select the gum tree and give it epic proportions within his paintings. Suddenly it's the gum tree that is the focus of the painting and they are very majestic and uh, the way that he begins to paint those gum trees coincides with his move to Harndorf in 1908. That's when we start to notice the gum taking on those epic proportions in great contrast to that earlier painting, Mystic Morn, uh, produced four years earlier, where the gum trees are quite young. They're young saplings. <laughs> and we forget that that was a, a painting that was produced in a city studio, that earlier work, prior to Heysen moving to Handorf. And it's interesting too that, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the Australian Impressionist, the Heidelberg School, that, uh, you know, a painter like Frederick McCubbin really paints narratives in the Australian landscape, doesn't he? It's the story of people, whereas Heysen, well, if there's anything in the landscape apart from the, the trees, he puts in the occasional cattle, doesn't he? But that's almost more for scale than to tell any kind of story. That's right. The story is about the tree. But Heysen also recorded the region of Harndorf and the people of Harndorf more intensely than any other artist living in Australia at the time. He documented it in a way which is similar to what Millet did with the Barbizon school and uh, documenting the rural workers and the, the farming of the land. And, and in the exhibition there are also portraits of some of the local farm workers of Harndorf and uh, paintings which include the toilers of the land, horse-drawn carts and the working of the land. So he also concentrated on that as a subject. But predominantly it is the gum trees uh, for which he is best known. This is Artworks on ABC Radio National, on air and online. Amanda Smith with you, along with Rebecca Andrews from the Art Gallery of South Australia, the curator of a touring exhibition of the art of Hans Heysen. Now, Rebecca, Hans Heysen might have given us a way of seeing the Australian landscape, but he was born in Germany and that meant he was, during the First World War, treated with suspicion, wasn't it? Yes, un unfortunately he was subject to some suspicion and in particular when he tried to sell a painting, uh, The Three Gums, to the National Gallery of Victoria, it was rejected because of Heysen's German heritage. And this was quite a devastating thing for, for someone like Heysen who had made his living on, on painting the Australian landscape, you know, uh, what, how could he have been any more Australian than what you see in his paintings? And it was an unfortunate time for him. We should mention too that this was a time in, in South Australia where all sorts of German words and place names were being changed, weren't they? I mean, things like um, Berliner Buns became Kitchener Buns for, for the duration and, and Handorf itself was renamed... Ambleside, Ambleside. Wasn't it? That's right, yes. Well, apart from that period during the First World War when he, he did suffer somewhat from that prevailing anti German sentiment, Hans Heysen was a popular and a successful artist. But as his painting and, and as the 20th century proceeds, Rebecca, is there any impact at all of modernism on his work? Yes, absolutely. And we find this in the mid-1920s, in, in 1926, in fact, when he makes his first trip to the Flinders Ranges in South Australia's north. At the time, uh, Heysen is 49 years old and he's becoming increasingly aware uh, 
of repetition within his works, within the gum tree paintings of the Adelaide Hills. Yes, He's finally also, paint one gum tree painted them all, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah. but also he, he's increasingly aware of modernism and the progressions in modernism in Australian art and particularly contemporary artists, his contemporaries such as Margaret Preston and even Max Meldrum. And if you think of how different their art is compared to Heysen's at this time, uh, you, you, you know, you will understand where he's coming from. Yes, so Heysen probably... is, is, is really still, I guess, harking back to 19th century painting traditions. That's right. He he was painting in a very traditional way, the Australian landscape and the prosperity of the bush. And at this time, he's probably in search of new subject matter. So he decides to make his first trip into South Australia's north in the Flinders Ranges. And for the first time in the late 20s, he encounters this desert-like landscape, completely barren and the, the antithesis of, of the landscape which he has come from in the Adelaide Hills. And he, he begins to paint it, and he is the first artist to select and exhaustively study this landscape as artistic subject matter in its own right, as opposed to, for example, artist explorers from uh, previous generations like S.T. Gill or Frome, who certainly painted the Flinders, but as artists who were accompanying explorations. Yes, for purposes of recording, yeah, really, weren't they? Exactly, exactly. They weren't painting it uh, for its artistic subject matter, whereas Heysen is. Well, describe and these paintings from this period and how they're different to the Adelaide Hills paintings in what they're reflecting and representing and stylistically. Well, it's a landscape that's completely barren. There aren't that many trees, uh, not much green grass at all because Heysen was only visiting during the summer periods and periods of drought. And uh, vast, vast distances and deceptive distances where there are ancient mountain forms in the distance. And uh, Heysen immediately fell in love with this landscape and he actually described it as the very thing that you moderns are trying to paint fine, big, simple forms and spaciousness everywhere. So it was and a sort of, he saw it as a, a, a modernist landscape. Is that he right? certainly did, yes. And he paints it that way too. Whether it's an unconscious thing, uh, his paintings of the Flinders Ranges are the closest, I believe, he gets to modernism in his art in terms of reducing the landscape to simple form and colour. I think his Flinders Rangers paintings are some of the most interesting works that Heysen produced because he was such a pioneer at that time to be exploring that landscape and, and recording it on canvas and on paper. And people forget that it was six years later that Rex Batterby first went up to Hermansburg Mission in the early 30s and, and introduced the art of watercolour painting to Albert Namajira. Heysen was before all of that and uh, certainly much later then in the 1940s you see artists like Russell Drysdale and Sidney Nolan painting the desert. Uh, so Heysen really was a pioneer in that respect. Well, as the Australian landscape left its mark on Hans Heysen, he's also uh, by name left his mark on the landscape, hasn't he? In that, certainly around South Australia, there's lots of things named after him, aren't there? There certainly are, yes. Uh, in the Flinders, of course, there's Heysen Hill and the Heysen Range near the Aruna Valley. There's also the Heysen Trail. <laughs> mm, that goes, uh, that's the walking track that goes from Victor Harbour up through the, the Flinders Ranges. There's also the Heysen Tunnels too, yeah? That's right, yes, on the freeway leading into Adelaide. So he, he had such a huge influence on our Australian art, but also our culture and our place names, obviously. And Hans Heysen, the exhibition is at the Art Gallery of South Australia just until next Sunday now. Then it's going on tour around the country for the next couple of years to various galleries in Victoria, in Tasmania, the ACT, Queensland and New South Wales. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see it. Rebecca Andrews from the Art Gallery of South Australia is the curator of the show. Rebecca, it's lovely to have you with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> 